It's red. It's recording. This is Sean Fitzgerald from Observe What Is Is. I've got Wayne with me here. The subject of this video is on business owners. Wayne is in the electrical field. I'm going to talk to him a little bit about his business now. Wayne, won't you give me an introduction, your full name, your age, if you're married, and a little bit about yourself. Uh, my, my name is Wayne Nicholson. I'm 49 years of age. Um, I'm unmarried at this point in time. I am living with someone pretty special. Um, I've been in the electrical game now uh, since I was 20 years of age. After my National Defence Force, I became and did my apprenticeship. Been through it over the years and um, eventually branched out onto my own. And I've been on my own for about 25 years as, as, as of today. Do you have any hobbies, Wayne? I have lots of hobbies. Um, I play a lot of squash. I'm a squash player, uh, which unfortunately I've got a lot of injuries, knee injuries, Achilles injuries, through the down the lines of motocross, running, road running, um, sure. that sort of stuff. It's just taking its toll. So you're quite a fit, you're a fitness type of guy, in a sense. Yeah. I do enjoy trying to keep fit here. Okay. Tell me a little bit of the nature of it. Are you an electrician? Did I get that wrong? Is that is that the field you're in? Can yeah, you I just explain I'm, that I'm to us? I'm an electrician. I concentrate more on construction, whereby we, I work with the builders, putting up developments of mini factories, housing complexes, uh, blocks of flats, sort of that down that line. We try and stay away from the everyday uh, house calls, etc. Keys, the repairs, stove repairs. We don't do any of that in our field. So you do the big complexes and the big, yes. the big, the big industry. Yeah, that's what we so do. you're an electrician, right? That's what you're okay. um, Have you ever been? I know this is silly. I, you know, I need to ask this. Have you ever been in any other business or in the past? I have. Um, in, in the time of um, working for a boss back then, um, a friend of mine approached me to take over and run his company, it was called Orbi Mini Donuts, where I went into management side of things, wore a collar tie and carried a briefcase. Donuts. Donuts, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a big we, difference from, from, from electricity. Yeah. So what happened? Well, we, how did you get we in We brought there? the machines in from America that manufactured the donuts, and we set up the stores, and we put people into different um, shopping centers around the, around what? the country, basically. And we supplied them with the donut mixtures, and the oils, and obviously the sort of the knowledge of how to run it. So what happened there? What, 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 was this, what happened with that business? Uh, the friend I was, I was running for, running the business for, uh, immigrated to Australia, where he tried to open up the same sort of business in Australia, and it didn't really take off there, and we were sucking our business dry here, trying to sort of support them in Australia with our South African rents. With your donut business, yeah? Yes, so you just closed it then? Yeah, we eventually happened? closed the doors, yeah. Okay, um, um, thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Um, I'm going to ask you, why did you, why did you become an electrician? Was it passion? Do you like electrical things? As, as coming out of school, um, I did, obviously I did, I went to trade school and I went to Congela College where I did a bit of electrical, a little bit, a little bit of electrical experience and it was a toss up between electricity and plumbing and I was offered a job as an electrical apprentice which I obviously took and never looked back. I thoroughly enjoy it. Can you, as an electrician, can you sort of do both? Are electricians sometimes also to become plumbers? Could they also? I, I should imagine that uh, uh, tradesmen or tradesmen, you all sort of work with the same sort of logical brain, mm. uh, but two totally different fields, fields of, of, of work. Um, so you almost became a plumber. It was, it, was in, it was in my scope. Um, I actually left Durban, um, I left home and I travelled to Joburg, where I originally came from, and I was quite involved with a friend of mine who was working for a company who looked upon taking me on as an apprentice plumber, but last minute he changed his mind and that's when I came back and I threw myself into the electrical side. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. What are some of the challenges that you faced to you obviously you worked for somebody, and I picked that up. But what are some of the challenges you faced to start this electrical business? Do you have any challenges that you'd like to share? Uh, initially, when I started the business, uh, the, the boss I worked for um, at the time made it quite sort of easy for me. He, he said he suggested that I, I subcontract to him, and he, he gave me his company van, which he deducted off, my, off the money I earned over a period of, uh, of a year. That page, so I didn't have to go out and, find, uh, and, and, and get myself a vehicle, and I was all sorted out. 
and I did a lot of work for him, but just didn't go through his books. I went through my books. That's basically how I started off. That is started, and the, and 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 um, the the challenges to start a business is that. Do you need money? Do you need? So there's always a cash flow problem. Where whether you're starting a business or whether you have had your business for, for 30, 40 years, there's always a cash flow business. Challenges at the time are to make a name for yourself, to be okay. recognised by other people that you're not a chancer. It's a big challenge. Right? And also to make sure your work is up to scratch, and that, of course, word of mouth control. I think I and I've seen this from other people that uh, the word getting yourself known is can be can be one of your biggest challenges. Very much so, yeah. yeah. I was fortunate enough that um, I'd done a lot of work with my previous company for most a lot of my clients that I'm, I'm still with today. Okay, great. What are the present benefits to you of owning your own electrical business in terms of freedom and in terms of maybe you know uh, being uh, your own boss? It's quite a it's quite a up and down scale. Yes, of course you. You've got the ability to decide that you want to have a long weekend because you want to go away or um, you want to go on a squash tournament. It's, you know, you don't have to take time off to speak to the boss. Uh, if, I, if I'm late to work, those are the sort of benefits you have. The other downside of these things are when you're not at work, things don't go like they should go. So initially, you might think it's 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 really great, um, but I've, I just found taking time off was actually a bigger headache than anything else because... I would play a squash tournament, get off the get off the, get off the squash courts, and I'll have 15 missed messages by clients, wow. and no one likes to hear it when they want you that you're on a squash tournament or a golf tournament or mm. down the coast on a weekend. So, kind of in a sense, you are the magic of your business. If you don't pitch up, nothing really gets going. So nothing, that's the problem. That's one of the challenges of, of absolutely. Your if you don't have your finger on the pulse, it's not going to work. And it can be uh, like a prison to some people if it gets really bad. Yeah, I think what what happens is your 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 responsibility becomes it's purely work. All you're doing all day is, is working. At, at at one point in time, I ran my business from my home, and um, I found I was now working seven days a week, and I was working sure. till eight, nine, ten o'clock every single night, only because my office was a door away and the computer was around the corner, right. and I would spend my time working. So um, yeah, what? you do get yourself tied up. Would you ever, having said all this in hindsight, with all your knowledge and experience, would you ever go back and work with somebody else? Um, you know, it does cross your mind every now and again because it is, times are so tough. And, you know, it's always nice to go to sleep and out of a guaranteed salary at the end of the month to sort your life out. Um, but I think I'm too far gone in... In, in having to answer to somebody in the morning and on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's all depending if I was offered something to run a business for somebody, so I didn't, that would be different for me. I okay. could do that. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Once you've come, become your own boss and you're used to your own lifestyle, it's very difficult to take orders absolutely. from somebody else. I think this is the biggest thing and, I've picked yeah, up. Absolutely, and, and, to work, and to work their sort of style. Yes. You know, when I'm so used to working the way I want it done and how right. I want it finished, whereas I have to change my, my outlook on that. And the whole thing is, I suppose, when you own your own business, you're building it for yourself. You know, you're building it for somebody for else. Somebody if you else. work for them, they're building their dream. Yeah. So I don't want to add my opinions. I'm just stuff I've picked up. Okay, some of your present challenges. Staff, uh, besides the time and the state of things, challenges, staff, clients? Staff are an ongoing challenge. Uh, it's, it's an never-ending Reputatious, uh, expl explaining, um, going through on a daily morning e exercise with my staff and anybody's staff. It's just a, a nightmare trying to keep track of material, tools, are my vehicles being looked after, um, are the sites being left clean. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a ne it's a never ending. Your next biggest challenge is um, your, your clients, the clients and payments. You spend your life begging for the money that you've worked so hard to, to bring in you and I have to beg for it. Clients got all their ups, all their goods that they wanted done and dusted and of course you're waiting for payment and that's also not Do you do you do they pay they don't pay up front, you do the job first and then they pay. You don't um, take a deposit or... it, it's depending on my on, on, on the client. Um, majority of my clients I get a fifty percent deposit up front. Okay. Um, with with a, a monthly uh, claim. 
but it doesn't work with my big contractors, my main contractors, because obviously they also, like, they're working on, on draws from the banks to pay their contractors, so there's no upfront 50% deposit. The thing is, you don't want to lose them. No, absolutely. Yeah, this is the whole I've problem. Had, I've, 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 been, I've done work for my clients, for one or two of my clients, since um, they were, um, since I was, I started my business, I'm working with somebody, and then I'm still working for them today, I'm running my own business. You know, I want to, and, and I'm great, on, on your hindsight, as you being an experienced electrician and a business owner, would you re recommend the electrical, the electrician business to somebody, to people coming out of school? Would you recommend it to people? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's a fantastic business, and it's it's growing with, with all these new challenges coming in, your LED lighting circuits coming in, your your uh, fiber optics coming into the, into the door, um, your PCs, all, all it's all coming together, and it's you know your 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 home automation, all these sort of things are absolutely amazing, and they're brilliant to get involved with. It's it's a it's a great it's a great challenge. Um, you yeah. know, thank you, Wayne. I actually now that I've got you, the question came to mind. I'm a yeah, as I've got an electrician now. I'm interviewing an electrician. Why don't what is the load? Do you, do you do you know what the load shedding problem is? Do you, do you understand that? What, think, what is it? Do they have not enough electricity yeah, in South Africa? I, I don't think we all are 100% are clear on what's going on, but, but purely substations all around the country have not been maintained and looked after, and they're collapsing and falling down, um, and there's just not enough electricity to go around. Your views on the cause of this? I, I would say mis, mis, mismanagement from, from the government side of things. They've just not put the money into the right channels whereby they are to maintain these substations. The substations are just absolutely falling apart. They don't, what we don't understand as people, and I'm going to ask this question because I'm going to give some of my stuff on this, it's it's irritating to under, to try and understand why the government has not planned this ahead. I mean, why? what, what is the, they know about this? What, is it not I, enough money, do you I, think? I don't think there's just not enough uh, uh, insight in the, in, the, in the government at the moment. There's, not, there's just not, not enough Qualified people. I, I don't, I don't no. think the people understand the, 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 you know, the, the outcome of not maintaining. You can't drive your car for, for, for eight years and not service it. Sure. It's going to break down. And um, I, I just think they think as long as it's working, it's, it's untouchable. Leave it. Let it you know, why, why try and fix something that's working? Well, uh, look, they must know there's a problem because, I mean, they're shutting off the lights now. They're doing that. Absolutely. So they're yeah. obviously realizing there's a problem. So I, I, don't, I don't know why. I think too late. Too late. It's Is that what late, you're basically. Your yeah, too I late. honestly believe it's too late right now. Uh, yes, they can fix it. It's just going to cost the country millions and millions. Are they heading toward, they talk about this big substation that they're going to, this is, they're gearing to get this new process in. Are they, are they doing that? Do you think they're doing that? Uh, they talk of, they talk of it, whether they do it or whether they are doing it, I don't know. There's no, I, I don't, I'm not big on watching the news and that, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It's Eskom, it's the, the, the guys, you, yeah. you never worked for Eskom. No, never, never, no, I never worked for no. All right, sorry about that. Okay. I have an electrician here, so I needed to ask that question. Okay, what are the your future prospects of the electrical business is good? I mean, there's always going to be need for electricians. Absolutely, there's you know it's electrical plumbing. It's something that's it's going to be around forever. Okay, so there's no now. Um, thank you, Wayne. Uh, tips and suggestions. I'm getting to this part. I want you to give us some t for our viewers out there for tips and suggestions for a person, not maybe necessarily in the electrical field, but if 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 you want to answer from an electrical side, it's great. For somebody wanting, coming out of school, 19, wanting to start a business or become an electrician, or somebody maybe older, 40, 50, 60, wanting, got some money and want to start a business. Any ideas and tips from you? Basically, I would say baby steps. A lot of people will, 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 will a lot of people will start their own businesses because they've been given an opportunity to, uh, let's just say, uh, there's a development going up of 50 houses and they get given this thing, we'll give you this job. He starts his own business, forms a, a little company, gets a couple of guys, and gets stuck in. And, and you know, before you know it, um, your, your overheads have climbed to whatever amount, and you just you lose that contract now comes to an end. And now, where do you stand? You've got nothing to carry on with. I would say don't grow too quickly. Okay, great. Thank you. Wayne, uh, a question on how do you become an electrician? You need to go to trade school. Uh, uh, how long does it take? What do you? What is required, really? Do you Based, well, to in today's day and age is a lot different to when I was when I did it. When my days I had to do fifty six weeks of practical training. It works out to be 
about five years of, 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 of practical training, you, you can have a shot at doing a trade test um, within 56, uh, just after 56 weeks. Uh, we went up to early funds and we wrote a trade test there. Nowadays, you basically go to trade school um, and you do one or two um, written, written exams, a couple of practicals, and there's a different levels you go through. And eventually you can qualify as an electrician. I should imagine today is the day and age they're doing it in about three years. Is it is the quality of electrician standard dropping or is it's it dropped? Has it dropped? Incredibly has it's, it dropped? Yeah. It's, Please it's, explain. It's actually it's a it's a very it's a very sore point uh, in in my in my heart. Uh, not just the quality of electrical work, but the whole building industry has gone has gone absolutely down downhill. In the, in 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 the in the days when. A, a plaster used to, a bricklayer used to put a wall up, it used to be 100% straight. A bricklayer. Um, sorry, just, yeah, can just in there. A bricklayer, um, sorry about that. No problem. A bricklayer would nowadays put a wall up, it'll be skewed, it doesn't matter, the plaster will make the plaster thick on one side, straight on the wall. The plaster's work is not so good, but he doesn't worry about it because the guy comes behind him and he skims the wall. The skimmer's not to, not to worry about it, how, how he skims the wall because the paint is going to be behind him to fix up that mess as well. So your actual artisans are just not like they used to be. It's is it it's is it because of the, uh, the the cutting corners for the money? Is it the money or is it no more passion uh, in the field? I think the training the training is too easy. It's, it, it doesn't take much to be an electrician anymore. Wow! Thank you. Thanks for your honest uh, insight onto that, Wayne. All right, we're going to do a little expo on Wayne's business now. Um, Oh, sorry. Anything else you'd like to add that I missed out on what we discussed? Anything you'd like to? No, you got it pretty much covered, um, pretty much in a nutshell. So. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we're going to do the expo on Wayne's business, just a little showcase. What makes Wayne unique from the other electrician? What's the difference in Wayne's business? <sighs> but I don't know if I'm any different to anybody else. I'm, I'm, I've stuck around in the construction industry because to me, I enjoy from ground roots, the planning, the designs, um, being out there doing the work. I have a lot of I liaise a lot of my clients. Um, we quite jovial. We not serious, serious people. We we just go out there. Our clients like us. My staff will all be trained. They they're good fun. They laugh and they joke. Um, yeah, I just think it, it's, you've got to do that at work. You've got to enjoy your clients. Clients must enjoy you. Um, yeah. I don't do anything specialised as such. I'm branching out slightly into uh, the the. Uh, geese installation, uh, sorry not geese installation, generator installation obviously now which we've been flooded with as well as um, inverters and battery backups and all that but that's, we're just touching on that now. Uh, just a quick question and I'm going to know I got you here, the LED lighting, the electrical side, you know these heat pumps, the energy business, is this is this a good field? This yeah. is the future. It's, it's still future. a bit expensive though, Very expensive. too much solar and that sort of yeah, thing? Uh, it's just too expensive in this country because everything's coming in from China. A lot of rubbish is coming in. Um, everybody is thinking they can make a fast buck by bringing in generators and all of that. Um, I've, I've been sourcing generators now for three, four weeks trying to find a generator that I can put my name behind that I can rely on. Really? Yeah. yeah. My goodness. Thank you, Wayne. All right, uh, Wayne, we're just going to leave. Uh, this was a, a, a really interesting conversation with an electrician from, from the horse's mouth. Um, I'm just going to leave your contact details. I'd like. Oh, one more thing, Wayne. You from Joburg, right? Initially, yeah. So you've been in Durban a while. Not a long time. All right, great. I'm going to leave. Wayne's going to leave his contact details. Uh, your full company name, uh, Wayne, okay. um, and then your full address, if, if possible, and a contact uh, number. Sure. Yes. Right, my name is Wayne Nicholson. Uh, my company is called WN Electrical. I'm based in Durban North uh, Red Hill area. My cell phone number is 082. Three seven one five double eight seven. My email address would be Wayne at WN Electrical dot co dot za. You uh, no website, just the Wayne. No website. Wonderful. Yes. We're at the end of the interview. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, this is Observe What Is Is Sean Fitzgerald. Please, if you like the video from Wayne, please leave your uh, comments and suggestions. To subscribe. It's free. Thank you, Wayne. You can end it. Just hit the red.